Hi, I'm going to make a short video here just to help those of you that were absent the day we did area by shoelace method or Green's theorem. We use this when we want to find the area of a figure in the coordinate plane where it's not so easy to find the base or the height, for instance, of a triangle. So here we have the base, which would be easy to find by using distance formula, but the height is not easy to find because if we try to drop an altitude, it's landing somewhere in the middle of a box. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the ordered pairs for A, B, and C, and we're going to write them in two columns. But when we write them in the columns, we need to start at one vertex and move counterclockwise around the triangle. For instance, if I start at vertex A, which is negative 2, 2, write that one down, and I'm going to save a little space, by the way, I'm going to save a little space here. If I start at negative 2, 2, which is right here, and I move counterclockwise, I'll go to C next. C is negative 5, negative 3. Then around to B, which is 2, negative 1. You know what? That looks messy. Let's fix that. We need a bigger eraser, I think. 2, negative 1. We're going to write the same numbers, but on the right side. Negative 3, and 2, negative 1. Okay, we're going to put a down arrow this way and a down arrow this way. That's because we're going to be multiplying and we're going to multiply across starting with the x and looping to the right and loop to the right and well if I attempt here to loop it's missing a number but notice I forgot the two here so I'm going to bring that two down here this arrow here tells me I'm going to be multiplying diagonally this way starting with the y value so I'm going to make my loops 2 times negative 5 negative 3 times 2, and negative 1 times, well, we're missing the number. The number that's missing is here. So I bring that down, negative 2. I'm going to take the products of these loops. I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add those products. I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to add those products. Then I'm going to subtract between those two, and take half. So watch. The area is going to be half of our products here. We get, let's take a look, negative 2 times negative 3, which is going to give us positive 6. And we have negative 5 times negative 1, which is positive 5. And 2 times 2, which is plus 4. Now we're going to subtract from that the products on this side. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Oops, we need a pen. Negative 10. Then we have negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And lastly, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. looks really big, but it's not so complicated. We'll bring down the one half. Inside of here, we get 15. Minus, let's see what we get in here. We'll have negative 16 plus 2, which is negative 14. That will leave us with one half of, this becomes a plus, so one half of 29. And that's 14 and one-half square units. There we go. There's the area. If you happen to watch my video on the area by boxing, this is the same triangle that I used in that video. And the area came out to be the same. We just did it differently in that video. I also want to make sure that I stress, because I don't think I stressed it enough, that this, is, oh, this method 
The shoelace method is only used on triangles. On triangles. If you happen to want to apply it to something like a quadrilateral, you'd have to break it up into two triangles and do the method twice. One shoelace problem for each triangle. So I wouldn't advise using it on a quadrilateral just because it's a little bit labor intensive for each triangle. It would be a lot of work and you certainly wouldn't want to use it for anything bigger. So we're going to stick to using it just for triangles. Triangles only. Shoelaces for triangles. That's it. Hope it helped.